But I think that the, the, the first issue, frankly, is that a government, a national government, has to assume a responsibility for, in effect, retaining the cultural values of a country. And if it's not doing that, unfortunately, it's not a case that they'll be voted out of power, but it's the fact that, that uh, there's a lovely word that they all like, which is legacy. That their legacy, which may not actually surface immediately, but which will finally be recorded in the history books, is that that particular government sold the country out. So I think that the first thing that has to happen is that the government has to take the initiative. I think uh, one of the things about working in Finland that was an eye-opener, a country of five million people, and they, this is going back a little bit historically, uh, probably about 15 years ago, the statistic for their national opera, national ballet, was that the subsidy from the government was 85% of their operating budget. Now, this is a country of 5 million people, and they can, they, they, the, the, the policy, the national policy says, that in order to remain Finnish, we must actually fully endorse the cultural activities. And by, by supporting them to that extent, they are saying to the population, they're leading the population, they're saying, this is important. And I think that the, the, the awful thing is that the, the tendency in many issues, unfortunately, and I mean, you know, we the artists are marginalized, but so have been the, the, the environmentalists for years. Now it's becoming expedient because it's staring you in the face mm -hmm. that you have to become an environmentalist government because if you're not, actually people will turn on you. But what think, do we do as artists? What do you I, and Susan, I, what do I do as I, artists in a bad situation for I, these very reasons? I think you've got to do something about the education in the schools. No, I, I really, because I feel very strongly about this, what they forget is that imagination helps you to relate to other people. Compassion and imagination are linked. So first of all, when you have a lot of crime, I think in a lot of cases, the kids have not had drama. They've not been able to play out their anger and their frustration. They haven't had that sense of working together. They haven't been able to work out the frustration in, by painting, and music to calm, to lull, to soothe. None of these have been deemed important. And if you're a businessman, you will go for the good manager who can imagine, in very strongly underlined, that in this situation could lead to this situation, could lead to that, so we better avoid this, so this, this, and this can happen. That's called imagination. If you cut the development of the imagination out of schools, you affect our crime statistics. I mean, this is perhaps overdoing it, but that's one thing that would help crime in this country, and it would help to develop strong managers. It would help to develop a stronger, more compassionate society. What else can we do besides education? With the arts? Well, Lower again, ticket in prices in the... for a start. So families can come and see shows with children. I started going to see theatre when I was six, seven, perhaps even younger. People can't afford that nowadays. You buy a house, you can barely survive with the cost of the houses. You come down here and you want to take your children. You can't afford to go to the theatre here, then pay for a meal, then pay for hotels. That's greed playing a large part of it too. And you look at organisations, you can run theatre companies, actually, with very, you don't need a large administration, but you've got to use your imagination again. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that I, I think that there's a couple of things. One is that, that actually the, as is happening, but it has to happen even more, that I think the artists have to find ways to, in effect, lobby the politicians directly for the notion that, that actually the arts need to be represented and, in effect, the politicians must take an interest in the arts. But I think that one possible way that the 
the system could be kind of tweaked. And I, I, I think that the, the difficulty is with the education business, that it's once again, it's, it all boils down to money usually, that if the school bu budget is only X, what gets cut is the perceived frills. Maybe it's that artists generally, if, if a system were, were set up, that artists would in effect volunteer even like an hour to go into school so that there is an hour every week maybe or something like that where an artist will volunteer to go into the school and talk about what they do which may be you know acting it may be painting it may be sculpting it may be metal welding it may be lighting whatever it is just to keep that profile existing and Maybe it's the old business that I mean, I, I, I personally enjoy going into schools, whether to be paid or not to be. I don't I don't really mind that part of it. But I would love to see a system where there were opportunities created. And maybe this is something that a school system should look at. And, and, I, and I, I believe this has actually been done in places like Vancouver, in some of the school systems where they actually do have a sort of a volunteer system of artists coming in to talk to students and to represent the arts because it's it's that sort of planting the seeds concept that if you can get it go if you can get, get a little momentum going and i think ultimately the other thing is that the philosophy that the artists must in effect try desperately to hang on to is that the arts must be leading not following and I think that the tendency is frequently that maybe we all give up too easily and we say, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to like, create something that is interesting from the point of view of new explorations, uh, new materials, whatever it happens to be. I'm talking here even about like new play scripts, whatever. Uh, if, the, if the attitude is let's make sure that we maintain a percentage of new 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 in fact my experience is that really ultimately people do wake up and smell the coffee